Hello and welcome to Donaldson's Clean Solutions webinar, The Impact of Filter Efficiency on Your Diesel Fuel. I am Jim Doyle, Senior Engineer at Donaldson. This webinar will run approximately 20 minutes. The objectives for this presentation are to explore the impact of filter efficiency on fuel cleanliness, to discuss the cumulative effects of single pass filtration, and to discuss how filter efficiency impacts filter life. Modern diesel engines, equipped with high pressure common rail fuel injection systems, like the one shown here in the diagram, have a need for much cleaner fuel than older unit injector equipped engines. This is because in modern high pressure common rail injectors, particles get trapped in the fuel flow control area highlighted in this schematic. And this creates damage to sealing surfaces that leads to rapid erosion of seal faces, such as the images seen here on the left. This is a new, clean, or undamaged surface. And this is an example of an eroded surface of the fuel flow control area. Damage to these sealing faces leads to fuel leakage followed by poor combustion control and the engine no longer meeting emissions requirements. Between 2009 and 2011, industry research was done to quantify this, uh, this need for the new high pressure common rail engine systems. Basically, this research set the new cleanliness levels required for fuel entering the fuel injection systems on engines. The work specifically identified the critical particle size that needs to be kept out of the fuel system. For older engines, that critical point was a particle of about 7 microns or larger. However, for modern high pressure common rail engines, particles as small as 1.5 to 3 microns are what do the damage. To get an idea of how this technology change relates to the engine life and performance and the job that filters must do on engine, let's look at some real world fuel dirt levels and how they relate to engine filtration needs. Basically, how big a job does the filter need to do? On the left side of this uh, chart, you can, you can see uh, fuel at various points in uh, distribution from manufacture all the way to end use. And across the top, we have the needs for older unit, uh, older unit style uh, series engines and for modern high pressure common rail diesel engines. Essentially, fuel coming straight out of the refinery historically has been at the cleanliness level needed for an older series diesel engine. That exact same fuel is 16 times dirtier than a modern high pressure common rail engine can tolerate. Typical fuel cleanliness levels as distributed to end customers and put into equipment needs a reduction in, in debris of perhaps four to eight times for an older series engine. And that same level of debris needs to be reduced 64 to 128 times to get to the cleanliness level needed for a modern high pressure common rail engine. Getting beyond typical fuel into fuel that has been in and out of some dirty storage tanks or stored for a long time and unprotected, dirt levels increase dramatically and that has a moderate effect on an older engine and as you can see it gets up into the range of 500 to 1000 times or more dirtier than a modern high pressure common rail engine can tolerate. These last two contamination levels tend to correlate with new engine fuel system operability issues or filter life issues. It is the fine particulate below 7 micron that is the major contribution to shortening filter life, not the big stuff that you see generally with the naked eye. As mentioned already, diesel fuel has dirt in it. What does it look like? And how much is there? Well, that really depends. Newly manu manufactured fuel is generally quite clean, but gets dirtier every time it is moved. Moving fuel in and out of tanks, down pipelines, and in and out of tanker trucks adds debris from the environment. Because fuel is such a thin fluid, the debris load it carries tends to be almost entirely small particles. The picture here is a representation of the relative size and distribution of particles found in fuel. For every thousand particles in the fluid, uh, they would typically have a distribution something like what is shown here. About 95% of them, or 950 of them, represented by these grains of rice, would be less than 4 microns in size. 30 of them, or 3%, represented by the candy-coated chocolate pieces, would be between 4 and 6 microns in size. 
Less than 2%, represented by these small rocks, would be between 6 and 14 microns in size. And only about 2% represented by these, or 0.2% represented by these larger rocks would be larger than 14 microns. Now, recall that for older engines, removing particles 7 microns and larger is sufficient to protect them from damage. For every 1,000 particles in the fuel, only a few are large enough to be of concern for an older engine. Perhaps 2% or about 20 of every 1,000 particles are large enough to really matter in an older engine. The rest go right on through the injection system and engine without causing any issue. Uh, contrast that with the modern high-pressure common rail engine where nearly all of the 1,000 particles are of concern and need to be removed from the fuel. So we again have our 1,000 dirt particles here and just how do various levels of filtration affect their concentration and distribution. Typical 25 micron nominal dispenser filters will remove a few of the larger particles but there are very few of them present uh, in most fuel supplies. Tighter 10 micron filtration of, often found at fuel dispensers with better filtration on them or an old secondary uh, filter on an older unit injector engine will capture a bit more but still leave most of the smaller particles in the fuel. The modern high efficiency filtration needed to protect a high pressure common rail fuel system either in bulk storage uh, tanks or on engines needs to remove almost all of the particles. It becomes quite obvious that the job the, the filter has to do has changed dramatically. We can see this visually. On the left here is a hundred times magnified image of a filter patch prepared to show us real world fuel particulate. Showing a typical concentration and distribution of particles, the green line in the image is about a hundred microns wide and the particle pointed out here would therefore be about 25 microns in diameter. And you can see that many smaller ones exist on the patch. The smallest stuff that you can make out are around two to three microns in this image. On the right is an image of the uh, prepared of the same fuel, but this sample was taken downstream of a 25 micron fuel dispenser filter. You can see that some of the larger particles are gone but most of the smaller stuff is still in the fuel. This is the reason that these types of filters last so long in the field. Since they are not removing many of the particles, their life is almost unlimited. On this slide, we can see the impact of a little bit better filter, a typical 10 micron dispenser filter or older secondary filter on a unit injector engine. You can see that more of the larger particles are gone but many of the small particles remain. Traditionally, this was good enough for older series engines. Finally, we look at the same fuel after it passes through a high efficiency bulk filter or secondary filter on a minor, modern high pressure common rail engine. You can clearly see that essentially all of the particulate is gone. That is what is needed to protect a high pressure common rail injection system and it's a much bigger job than previous engine filters have done. At the risk of beating a dead horse, here are all of those images together where you can keep in mind that even the smallest visible particles in these frames can damage an engine. The impact of filter efficiency on fuel cleanliness levels is quite stark. Another concept to consider when assessing the job uh, the filter is doing is how particles re uh, removal adds up over time. It's a cumulative effect. There is new fuel hitting the filter all of the time. This means uh, there is new dirt hitting the filter at all times as well. This leads to the inevitable question, how long will my fuel filter last? Well, the dirtier the fuel, the faster the filter will plug. And few people actually know how clean or dirty the next several loads of fuel are that will be coming to the filter. So as you can see, that is a heavily loaded question. Anyone giving a firm, confident answer about real-world fuel filter life may not understand how difficult that answer really is to predict, or is touting a filter so open that it is doing very little work and will last darn near forever, no matter what fuel is coming to it. When I'm asked this question about how long a filter will last, 
I talk about the state of the fuel today and that based on normal conditions of fuel, we can make some assumptions for planning, but to say with certainty how long a filter will, will last, that's just something I can't do because sometimes, and more frequently now than ever, something unexpected happens in the fuel. When filters plug unexpectedly, it is a hassle for everyone. The funny thing is, when filters plug quickly, it's almost never due to a big increase in the full range of particles. It's almost always due to a huge change in the fine particulate only, manifesting as a significantly higher level of sub-4 micron particles. About 90% of all rapid filter plug-in cases we work on boil down to three basic causes, and all of them show up as a massive increase in fine particulate. First, gelling fuel creates a tremendous amount of fine wax particulate. Cold flow improver is often used in these situations, but cold flow improver does not keep the fuel liquid. It merely changes the shape and size of the wax crystals formed, and these crystals are still large enough to plug high efficiency filters. The wax crystals are present at thousands of times higher concentration than the dirt in the fuel itself. Diesel fuel must be liquid to filter out the damaging hard particles. Next, biodiesel blends generate large amounts of solids as the fuel cools or absorbs water. A certain trace component in the bioblend, called glycerin, begins to form solids at temperatures as high as 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And the presence of water in or with the fuel will cause even greater solids formation. These solids come out of solution as sub-4 micron particles and can agglomerate into larger particles over time, plugging filters. Finally, metal carboxylates are a historically common material that were first found contributing to injector deposits in older engines. Because they were small enough to pass through older filters, they didn't load there and they merely left traces behind in the injectors. In new engine systems, it's more common to find them collecting in high efficiency filters uh, either on engine or in the bulk storage filter application. All three of these rapid filter plugging scenarios are explored more deeply in previous webinars and can be found on the YouTube uh, uh, on YouTube or can be found and linked to at mycleandiesel.com. Hopefully this presentation gave you a more in-depth perspective on fuel particulate and how filtration efficiency affects it. Additionally, Hopefully you've gained a new perspective on changing filtration needs and what goes along with that as far as operating diesel equipment. As mentioned, several topics mentioned here have their own webinars and technical write-ups already online and linked to on mycleandiesel.com. So please visit or search for them for more information. Thank you.